Hey guys, long time no see. So I did promise a few of you that I was gonna do a life update video and that's what I'm doing right now. As you probably already guessed by the title of this video. So a lot has happened in the last 10 or 11 months since I last uploaded a video here on YouTube. And I feel like it's gonna be exciting for everyone that still wants to watch and keep up with my life. I can tell you one thing though. So if you're wondering whether this means that I'll be back here on YouTube full time with like weekly vlogs and stuff, I'm sorry, that's just not gonna happen right now. I'm not saying that it's never gonna happen again, but at this point in my life, I'm just still too busy for weekly vlogs and stuff. And I feel like right now, the way my life is without having to edit videos and stuff, it's just, I'm way more at peace with myself. I just love life right now and want to live it to the fullest. And for me, that does not include YouTube at the moment. But that doesn't mean that I don't love talking to all of you on Instagram. So if you follow me over on Instagram, you can always send me a message and I'll try to respond to everyone and stuff. So that's a lot easier than keeping up with the comments here on YouTube. <laughs> because it does take a lot of time to respond to all of them and it's just easier over on Instagram for me and also posting stuff about my trips. I don't have to edit videos or at least I don't. I know there are people who edit Instagram videos. I usually don't. I'll just post a story and that's it. It's so much quicker and yeah. So if you don't follow me on Instagram yet and you do want to keep up with like my work life and stuff, you can go ahead and do that. It's the same um, Instagram handle that I have right on here on YouTube. So it's easy to find me over there. And what was I actually saying? So I think I was telling you that I was not ready to come back full time to YouTube. I might sometime in the future, but I'll get more into why my life is still super busy right now. So first of all, yes, I did get married. I know you're all waiting for me for like the big announcement. We got our wedding photos a couple of weeks ago. We have looked through them. I haven't posted them anywhere. <laughs> So sorry about that, just too busy for it right now. So um, here you can see my wedding band. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is my right hand. And here in Austria, it's custom to wear a wedding band on the right hand. And then again, I kind of thought initially that I'd wear my engagement ring on the same finger that I'm wearing my wedding band. But then again, I don't know, I just feel naked <laughs> on my left ring finger right here on my left hand. So I just left my engagement ring on here. Maybe one day I'll move it to the other side because many people in Austria wear both rings on their right hand. And right now I'm wearing one of them on each hand. So, <laughs> oh well. I know many people in other countries wear their wedding band on the left hand. I'll talk more about the wedding in a bit. I have something that happened earlier this year that I want to share first. So I don't know how many of you have followed me before the pandemic because I do know that I gained a lot of subscribers during the pandemic but if you have followed me before that you guys know that I was scheduled to go to PERSA training back in April 2020 and then it didn't happen because of well the whole pandemic and my airline not needing new PERSAs obviously because we weren't even flying as flight attendants right so well, I went and did all of those seminars and language tests and interviews and an assessment center and everything that I needed in order to become a purser, which is basically the boss of the cabin crew working a flight. I did all of those prereqs back in 2019 and the beginning of 2020. And then I was supposed to be a purser starting June 1st, 2020. You guys know my training was, well, purser training that is, was postponed indefinitely and I didn't know when it was going to happen but I had a really strong feeling that 2022 was going to be the year so I didn't hear from my airline until March 2022. That's when they contacted me and asked me whether I was still on board to go to PERSA training and obviously I was, I was like, yeah, I'm super excited. Like, I can't believe that is finally happening. Actually, until like the last minute, until I was sitting there in the classroom at PERSA training, I did not fully believe that I was really going to PERSA training because the last time it was canceled two weeks before the training course. So I was like, 
well, what if there is another、uh, mutation or something? What about the war? All of that, like, how's that gonna affect me going to Persa training? So, but yeah, it did happen, <laughs> and as of now, I am a Persa. I've been a Persa for a couple of months, and. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting, but also why my life is a lot busier. But yeah, I had a really strong feeling that I was probably gonna go to personal training this year at some point because flying has definitely picked up again. So I've worked overtime this year, <laughs> many months in a row. So yeah, definitely flying is super busy again. The summer was busy, like summer flying always is busy. But during like the past two summers, not like this one, but the two summers before that. There was not a lot of flying, like you guys know that, right? I've told you about it. <laughs> If not, go check out those vlogs、um, from the past, and you'll probably realize I was doing one or two trips a month. I'm talking long haul trips, not day trips, but still, that's not a lot. <laughs> so, anyways, I went to Persa training in May, and I think I got done in July. Then I was flying as a flight attendant for like two weeks because you have to wait until. Your whole training class is done with like trainee flights and stuff, and then I was finally awarded my Persa wings on August first. So I've been a Persa for like four months now, I think. So it's been super exciting, but also challenging because now basically I'm the one in charge of the flight attendants on a flight, and also if there is an emergency situation, I have special tasks in like、um, medical emergencies. I also need to make decisions and stuff, and so my new job as a purser actually comes with a lot more responsibility, and yeah, <laughs> also means writing way more reports than I ever did as a flight attendant, and a lot more coordinating within like the cabin, making sure that flights depart at the right time, that we get done with boarding, like notifying the gate agents and stuff if there are any delays. Also talking to the pilots way more and making decisions together with the captain and stuff. So my new role is definitely demanding, and also like I'm all the way on the bottom of the seniority list again because, like. I went into being a purser with five years of seniority, which is not a lot of seniority. So that's why I'm all the way on the bottom again, which means bidding on flights is not that easy. So I'm working. I'd say I'm working around seventy-five percent short haul right now, and about twenty-five percent long haul. As of before the pandemic, when I was part of the A three eighty crew, I was doing three long haul trips a month, and then maybe a day trip. Short haul, and that was it. And now I have a lot more trips. I'm working way more days because before, like, if I worked long haul, I'd have a break of like 48 hours or something in between both flights, like、um, the flight to a destination and the return flight. And now with flying a lot more short haul, I really have days off、um, during a trip, right? So I'll work like 10 hours, then have 12 hours off, then work another 10 hours, then have 12 hours off, and that kind of way. We still have it really good compared to some other countries and airlines where flight attendants don't have、um, the privilege of getting a minimum rest of like 10 to 12 hours at a hotel, which I do. So I'm not complaining at all. It's just it's it's way different from what I did as a flight attendant. Basically, lots of the trips are way different. I worked a really like high time trip the other week. I think it was a five day trip that got me like thirty three block hours, which is a lot. With like Tel Aviv flights, Lisbon flights, like longer flights, longer flights concerning short haul flights, because <laughs> long hauls are always longer. By the way, I do have a Tokyo flight scheduled、um, very soon, and that's gonna be the longest flight I ever did because I saw that the return flight. <laughs> Is scheduled for like over fourteen hours. That's actually due to some airspace closures, as you might have heard here in Europe and Asia. So yeah, I'm excited to see what that's gonna be like because in the past the return flight was usually around twelve hours long, and the longest flight I've ever done was well, I've got two flights that are the same length basically. So the Singapore flight was thirteen hours and fifteen minutes, and then the Mexico City flight was also thirteen hours and fifteen minutes. Those were the longest flights I've ever worked. So I'm excited to see what the Tokyo flight is going to be like. Like I've been to Tokyo many times, but we usually use a different route to get there and get back. So, anyways, this is one of the big news that I wanted to share with you guys, and then. Yeah, I already mentioned I got married. Mari and I—we've been married for around two months now, and it's been amazing. 
So let me talk about the wedding for a little bit. We had a civil wedding first. So here in Austria, you can't just go to a church to get married. You do need a civil wedding first. So we had our civil wedding the same day as our church wedding. So we went there at around lunchtime to get married and we had our closest family members join us there. And then after the civil wedding, we went and got our pictures taken. So we had a photographer with us for most of the day. I'm gonna show you some of the pictures. They're courtesy of the photographer, obviously, because I don't want to incur any copyright issues or anything. Like this video is not sponsored in any way, but I'll link our photographer's details down below just because I feel like it's only fair because it's her work and not mine. So yeah, I am sharing some of the pictures. I did check, she allowed me to post some of them online. I haven't posted any of the pictures anywhere else yet, so I'll have to go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll post one before I actually upload this video. I don't know when I'll get to editing and stuff, but yeah, maybe that's what I'm gonna try to like do so that you guys know that this video is coming out. We'll see. Anyways, so we went and got all of our pictures taken. Then we had our church wedding. So Mari and I were both Catholic. Most people here are Catholic here in Austria, but most people don't really practice their religion, if that makes sense. Anyways, let's not get into religion. I just wanted to mention that we did have a wedding at church and afterwards we went and had our wedding reception and well, not everything went to plan. We had a beautiful day nevertheless, but we were planning on having the first part of the reception, which was appetizers and drinks outside on this beautiful terrace of our wedding location. And well, it was raining cats and dogs that day. <laughs> so yeah, we were actually holding an umbrella in pretty much all of our wedding pictures, but that's okay. I feel like, well, we could get the use photoshopped or something, but at the same time, I'm like, I wanna have pictures of the day exactly the way it was. I don't want a Photoshop wedding that looks like it was a sunny day in like the pictures, even though it was not, you know? And I read somewhere that it actually brings luck for the marriage if it rains on your wedding day. So that's what we use in order to stay positive because trust me, like, <laughs> should have seen my wedding dress. Well, I didn't have a long train or anything. The dress came with a train I had cut off by a tailor. <laughs> Um, it was very wise to do that because like that little bit that hit the ground <laughs> like underneath it was like brown you know like dirty because I was walking around outside and it was raining and yeah it stuck to the dress but it didn't show on like the surface on like the outside of the dress so that's okay and we had planned for a warmer day we got married in the middle of september and we had planned for temperatures in like the 20s in celsius <laughs> which is around 60 something in fahrenheit and then it was, well, on a day, the temperatures were as low as 8 degrees centigrade, which is around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, probably, or 48 degrees. Anyways, like, it was cold. <laughs> I was glad that I got um, a cape that I could put on top of my wedding dress because otherwise I would have probably been freezing. So nevertheless, we had a beautiful wedding. My host mom from the US, she came all the way from South Carolina, which is where she's been living for the past few years because when I did my exchange here, I was actually living in Ohio with my host mom and she has moved around a bit since then. <laughs> so yeah, you guys might remember me meeting up with her in Chicago or in Washington DC and stuff because yeah, I just went and flew or worked flights wherever she was living and now she came all this way to visit me in Austria. It was her second time here, which was amazing that she got to go to the wedding and be a part of it. And yeah, um, she was here for a few days before the wedding because, well, obviously you're not going to fly to Austria for a day, right? So we took her sightseeing, we took her to the Malk Abbey, we took her to my hometown, we took her to a lake 
in the area and stuff. But it was so rainy and I felt a little bad because I wanted her to experience like sunny, beautiful Austria and we got rainy Austria, but oh well. I think she still had a great time and it was just so great to have her here with us for the wedding. And I also had some relatives come all the way from Germany and stuff. It was just so amazing to have all of our friends and family with us for this special and wonderful day. And I don't know, at this point, I probably already started putting some wedding pictures on the screen because I don't have any videos from the wedding. We didn't have a videographer, but I do have those pictures um, that are, well, like I said, <laughs> taken by our very talented photographer. So you can see the wedding cake here. I made the cake myself. So I baked the cake, I decorated the cake, and we did have several types of cake. Some of my friends and family made a cake. So we did have something for everyone, also for people with food allergies and stuff. We made sure that everyone has something right there. Yeah, we did have our first dance, which was beautiful. And well, we didn't go take dance classes. We taught ourselves how to dance. I, ha I have taken dance classes in the past. It's been a long time ago, but we were able to actually pull this off. <laughs> We did a lot ourselves for the wedding, like the decorations. We did all of that ourselves on the day of the wedding in the morning. My sister helped us with that. <laughs> so um, like the centerpieces, um, which were basically the eucalyptus, a thing you said you can see in the picture and the roses that we actually stuck on those <laughs> and also the flowers um, in the vases on the tables. And then my wedding bouquet, what well, we did buy that from a florist. So yeah, the bouquet, those are real flowers, but all of the other flowers were fake apart from those um, in the pots, they had them at the venue. It was a beautiful day, it was a lot of work. I feel like once we were sitting there at the altar, it, it was like, okay, um, now everything's just gonna go either the way we planned it or something's gonna go go wrong if something doesn't work out then it's not in our hands anymore we didn't have a wedding planner but i feel like that's the moment when all of that stress vanished because we knew everyone's here we're just gonna walk all the way over to the venue which was about a 10 minute walk at most maybe like seven minutes and then we're just gonna be there for the rest of the day and yeah uh by the way we had my former music teacher from junior high play the organ at the wedding, which was beautiful. He also played the organ at my dad's funeral many years ago. So it was a very emotional thing to hear him play the organ at my wedding, right? And yeah, it was just a beautiful day. I feel like I have already talked too much, but I also feel like a lot of you are probably interested in this kind of stuff because I know many of you were rooting for me and Mario getting married and all that. So. Yeah, that's why I wanted to share the story. For our honeymoon, we went to the US, so we went to the West Coast. We flew into San Francisco, we drove down to LA, most of the way on Highway 1. The last part, we skipped the Highway 1 because, yeah, it would have taken too long. And then we went to Vegas and the Grand Canyon. We were mainly there for the Grand Canyon. We're not big on gambling and stuff. So, I mean, I feel like the hotels are really nice and you have Venice right next to um, Paris and New York and all of that. So I do like the sites. I'm not a big fan of the casinos, to be honest, but that's another story. <laughs> so we did see the Grand Canyon, West Rim and Hoover Dam. It was just beautiful. And then we went all the way back to San Francisco and that's where we flew back from. We did fly my airline as regular passengers. I didn't use my employee benefits because I changed my name so I couldn't have used them anyways because we left pretty much like two days after the wedding so uh, would have been too soon and stuff and also you know I wouldn't take the chance of not getting a seat and not getting to go on my honeymoon. You know that's just no. <laughs> I don't do that. Like my nerves would have been wrecked. And also, even if we would have gotten seats, by the way, the plane was pretty full. So we might not have been sitting together and stuff. We did fly economy class, that was fine. And my my coworkers were the best. Like they, they were so attentive because I knew a few of the flight attendants that had seen that I have gotten married. Um, and they knew that it was my honeymoon. I had 
the purser come up to us and congratulate us and stuff and bring us champagne. And it was just so nice. And on a flight back, I also knew one of the flight attendants and he had also seen that this was my honeymoon on Instagram. And so he told all of his um, co-workers and they all came up to us and were like, hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? And it was just so nice. Like, I loved it. Oh, by the way, so it was Mario's first time in California and Nevada and Arizona. And he has been to New York City before, but he didn't realize how big the US was <laughs> until the day we drove through like the desert and he was like, well, but there's nothing there. He thought that all of the spans of land and stuff, all of the roads that everything would be way more populated. I mean, there are a lot of people living in California. Obviously, we know that. <laughs> But at the same time, like here, if you drive for three hours or four hours, you're probably going to be in another country, you know? So it's definitely been a bit of a shock for Mario. <laughs> um, at the same time, he loved driving in the US because um, here in Austria, you can't turn on a red, at least not now. They're planning on introducing that at some point. But as of now, you can't turn on a red. So in the US, he was like, can I really turn on a red? And I was like, yeah, you can, unless it says that you can't turn on a red, which it actually states like at the traffic light. And he was like, he felt really, you know, like he felt like he was breaking the law when he turned on a red, but then everyone else was doing it. And he had heard that it was okay in the US. So at this point, I've probably also shown you some of the honeymoon pictures because I don't think we took any videos either. By the way, I just got a new phone. I'm filming on my phone today because I just did not want to have to deal with taking my camera out and um, charging the battery and stuff. So yeah, I feel like I told you all about our wedding and the honeymoon at this point. So let's continue. What else is going on in my life? So like I told you guys, I'm super busy working full time as a purser and being home on the weekends and stuff is tricky as well because of fitting and everything but so far it's worked great and we're actually going on a little vacation soon if things work out with, with like you know standby flights and stuff we we'll still have to check on those but we are planning on going on a mini vacation so yeah if you follow me on instagram you might actually see <laughs> some of the stories that i'll post from that destination um and then something exciting as well. So we are looking into architects to maybe have someone build a house for us. So it's going to be a duplex, I think, if everything works out. But yeah, we're looking into that right now. So inflation over here has been nuts. And also you do need a 20% down payment if you are going to um, get a mortgage for a house. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of tricky to get a mortgage over here and stuff. And also like the cost of buying a house or having a house built has been outrageous before the whole inflation happened this year, you know? So yeah, that's what we are looking into. So we've had a meeting and that's what's on my mind as well. And I have built the house before um with an ex-boyfriend of mine and i know how stressful it is so by the way in case you're wondering buying a house is not really that popular over here so usually people buy some land which in this area is really expensive as well and then they have someone build a house on there there are some houses that are on the market for sale but not that many i'd say compared to other countries like the us where it's I'd say more popular to just buy a house than have your own built. But yeah, we are looking into that. So I don't know whether that's gonna work out and stuff as we are basically in the beginning of the process. But um, like this apartment is nice and our lease is still good for another two years. And that's basically how long we're definitely gonna stay in here. But we are looking at other options as well because I think we have like 650 square feet and that's just not that much space so um yeah that's what's going on in my life basically apart from that I think I think I told you guys most of the things that happened in the past 10 11 months since we last spoke 
So I do really hope that you enjoyed this video. And like I said, I'm sorry that I can't come back to YouTube with weekly vlogs at this point, but I do also hope that you understand that my personal life and my happiness come first. And I am really excited about this video and uploading this video because I have planned it for a really long time. And I just want to make sure that, you know, that if you say that you're done with this channel because I'm not uploading videos regularly, that's totally fine, like up to you. And I understand that as well. So feel free to do that. But if you want to wait and see it, like, like I said, I'm not sure at which point I'm going to come back to YouTube um, in the future. But if you want to wait around and see, um, then that will make me very happy. Anyways, you guys take care. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season if you're celebrating the holidays. And I just hope that you're all well, that you're all doing great with everything that's happening in the world right now. And I just hope that I'll see you sometime soon on here. Well, take care, bye-bye.